Brita Jensen's novel, A Lawyer Born, won the 2019 Writers League of Texas YA Discovery Prize. Recently published works include Hiranga's War, Ghosts of Yokosuka, and several short stories. She lived in Japan, South Korea, and Germany for 22 years before settling in Aston, Texas. It's yours, Brita. Thank you. Aloya Born is a young adult science fiction novel. It's the first in the series, and the second book, Hirana's War, is out. So both are available to purchase. Um, and today's giveaway is an ebook of Aloya Born. So that will go out to you next week if you um, sign up, which you can go ahead and do. I'm going to start with chapter one, which is the beginning of the novel with Leonora. And the novel has two narrators that I'm going to read the beginnings of their opening chapters. Chapter one, Leonora. My mother said everyone has two hearts. At one point in our lives, we'll wish one would stop beating so the other can live more peaceably. I didn't understand what she meant then. Now it's too late to ask her. Everyone except father lost their sights in the mists that descended on Asanis nine years ago. The mists moved swiftly like a heavy, wet fog, clinging to our skin and rendering all of Asanis blind within a day. Hardly anyone talks about it. I don't know if it's because of the new technologies my mother created before she died, or because pretending that our lives are better blind will make it so. My life before the mists was about snatching up the beauty all around our community of Asanas. The dark pines, the wildflowers in the meadow after spring's rains, the paintings of the ocean my mom created from her memories of Lepidaya, my birthplace. After the mists, I was lost, struck temporarily blind with everyone else, not understanding how to retrieve the joy I had felt in watching the seasons change in the surrounding fields and forests. However, my parents and I began to regain partial sight after a time. For a while, I could only perceive shapes and shadows, sometimes glares of light. Then the slivers of time passing in the landscape became clear again, and I was left with permanently poor peripheral vision and night blindness. I closed my eyes, the birds making a racket outside, my fingers tracing the whirls and bumps on the page. T-R-A-C. Then I lost my place and I had to go back. T-R-E-A-C-L. Or is that an E? Maybe it would be better if I was blind like everyone else, except father. And he could touch read fine. Impossible. I wanted to shove the paper away, but then Agda would hear me and scold me. She'd never gone to school. Leonora, you studying? She called out from the kitchen. Yes. I can't hear you touch reading, she cackled. She knew how terrible I was at it. Before the miss, reading had been the one thing I was best at. Now my poor scores made me the ridicule of the entire school. I refocused myself, closing my eyes, trying to feel the patterns, to memorize each letter, commit it to memory. Then a sound startled me and the paper slipped onto the floor. Bass drums pounded the air through the loudspeakers outside our house everyone milling about on the dirt footpaths to and from the center fields of Asanas would be stopping and waiting for the horns, the signal to recite our final daily oath. Our sight blinds us to the truth of men's hearts. In the kitchen, Agda, short and pudgy, ignored the drums, continuing to sing an old song from Lepidaya instead. Lua, lua, I, I caught you with my eye. If father wasn't home, she never recited the oath. She continued frying chicken and saffron in one pot and beans in the other. I gladly joined in her private rebellion, singing louder in hopes of killing my nerves about my final exams the next day. Lua, lua, I, I caught you with my eye. Usually Dex was around when we cooked dinner, but for some reason he was late. Girls at school had been bragging about what they'd done with him during the spring festival a few weeks back. I figured that since Nati and Ailey were always lying about our classmates, including me. It would make sense that they embellished their adventures with Dex. I didn't know how to bring it up with him. And maybe that was what was making me nervous, not my exams. Chapter two, Dex. If I admit I love her, I will lose her. 
The one honorable act of my 17-year-old life, I was convinced, was waiting to happen. Too much of my life in Asanas was lived waiting for a future where most of my choices had been altered by the mists. When you're born seen and your vision is taken away, you think of everything in terms of what you remember you used to see. Leonora used to be pale with red splotches on her arms and neck that her father couldn't get rid of. I used to be a darker brown than my older brother, Niku. The little ones are so lucky being born blind. They have no idea what they're missing. They can't ache for what they don't know, but I still remember. Leonora is the only one I can talk to about the old wildflowers. She describes them so beautifully like their perfume scent can bring back all the color into our lives. Asanas has a thick forest with hot summers and mild winters. We sometimes prayed for snow, but rarely got it. The icy weather likes to stay in the mountains to the west and north of us. Without seeing the forest, only feeling its oppressive darkness and scratchy things, I sometimes wonder if it's changed. I seem to be the only one in my family who cares about such matters. Perhaps I want to see the forest because the last time I beheld it, I was untying my father's dead body from where he'd hung himself from an oversized old birch, so my mother wouldn't know that how he'd died. Leonora and I found him together in the forest surrounding our neighborhood in Easterly, where she used to live next door to me. I still resided in the same small collection of wooden shacks almost everyone except the farmers lived in. For some reason, in that worn shack with leaky windows, my mother loved my father, who never deserved her. Her kind face, like Leonora's, is frozen in time, never growing old. The mists should have felt like ages ago, but nine years later, you would think I'd have adjusted to the darkness by now. Mostly, I'm mad that I'll never see the girls at school naked, now that they've grown up. I have to settle for fleeting moments of caressing their skin when it's slick with perfumed sweat. Sometimes, the bright daylight will play a trick on my damaged eyes, and I'll think I can see something other than a shadow and they'll trip over myself and cause the girl I'm kissing to fall. For a second, I expect to see something glorious, and then the moment is gone. What good is it for a girl to take her clothes off when she goes swimming if you can't see her in her naked glory, or behold the pleasure in her eyes when she has given you her hand for the first time? A look I'll never see in Leonora's face. Dex, is that you? A girl calls out to me on the footpath. It doesn't matter who it is right now. I pick up the pace, making certain the identify button is off on my navy belt. I hate my inability to control this part of myself. The fact I can't tell Leonora, who I used to spill my guts to about everything, haunts me everywhere I go.